What's the most amazing thing about the universe? The only way we can see the universe is from inside it. We will likely never possess any way of viewing our universe from outside its physicality. That in the grand scheme of things we are all immortal. Our organic cells will die, our consciousness will cease, and we will no longer be able to directly observe existence, but the atoms that make up our bodies will simply be new compounds. And if energy is neither created nor destroyed, if our atoms continue to be, we will eventually make up the building blocks of new compounds. Pieces of us will watch the sun swallow up Mercury and Venus. Pieces of us will watch supernovae and black holes and all sorts of cosmic phenomena. Perhaps even one day our atoms will return to a nebula, and the cycle will begin again. A new star is formed, new planets begin to orbit it, liquid water forms on a small green rock orbiting the star, and an intelligent species evolves to travel to marvel at the wonders of our universe. One of my favorite shows is Battlestar Galactica and one of the quotes that stuck out to me was all of this has happened before, and it will happen again. I tend to think there's some truth to that. I've had a couple friends and my grandfather die this year, and as an agnostic I am processing death a bit differently from the rest of my family. I don't think of death as the ending, as a finality. I don't think there is an afterlife as most religions conceive of it. I think that in a weird way, we all live forever. If you were on a planet 65 million light years away from Earth and had a really good telescope, you could see the dinosaurs. That every single random event since the dawn of creation. The birth and death of stars, planets and galaxies, the very genesis of life has led to you being here right now to ask this question. We are a long way off from truly understanding the origin and ending of the universe, but we have good theories and time will see that knowledge refined into fact. This is because we live at just the right time. Remember how galaxies are actually flying apart? This movement is also accelerating. Galactic structures will fly apart faster and faster. They will eventually exceed the speed at which we could ever hope to travel. They may exceed or match the speed of light. But that means that light shining from these quickly receding galaxies will ever reach us, and no ship could ever catch up to them. They will not see cosmic background radiation. So you couldn't see them with any kind of telescope. You'd see stuff in your local group, and that's it, and you'd think that the universe is a foamy cluster of galaxies that has an ending. Future civilizations may never know the true nature of the universe and could think it finite. How young it is. People look at the universe being 13.7 billion years old and say that is ancient. That is nothing. Stars will continue to form for another 100 trillion years. Even after that, stellar remnants will exist for quadrillions of years. Black holes will still produce energy that can be used by intelligent civilizations for 10 trillion years. Keep in mind if biological life doesn't destroy itself, we will just keep getting more and more knowledge. It's probably a safe bet that within 500 years, which is nothing on universal time scales, we will be an interstellar species that has long ago transcended biology. There is no telling what our descendants will do for the remaining life of the universe. The 4 to 5 billion years of biological evolution of life on Earth will be looked at as an embryonic stage for endless quintillions of years of real life to begin post-biology. They will view the universe as their oyster, a place of infinite possibilities while we are still just spending our days trying not to die and trying to avoid being punished by our brains with pain. There is a theory which states that if ever anyone discovers exactly what the universe is for and why it is here, it will instantly disappear and be replaced by something even more bizarre and inexplicable. There is another theory which states that this has already happened. Look again at that dot. That's here. That's home. That's us. On it everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you ever heard of, every human being who ever was, lived out their lives. The aggregate of our joy and suffering, thousands of confident religions, ideologies, and economic doctrines, every hunter and forager, every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization, every king and peasant, every young couple in love, every mother and father, hopeful child, inventor and explorer, every teacher of morals, every corrupt politician, every superstar, every supreme leader, every saint and sinner in the history of our species live there, on a mote of dust suspended in a sunbeam. Carl Sagan The way we perceive the universe. In its physical form, we think it's all around us, on a cosmic scale. 
but more than that it inside all of us. We're made of each and every atom that the universe is comprised of. It sounds super philosophical and like something a stone person would say, but the distinctness within our universe is what sets everyone apart. The way each of us, made up of the same elements of this universe, yet managed to be so different. Perhaps you could say the greatest and rather miraculous thing of all is in fact, life. That it doesn't exist to be observed. In fact under different circumstances all of its trillions of stars and planets and oceans and moons and mountains could exist for billions of years without ever being observed by anyone. The thing that freaks me out is that no matter how far off a point you imagine in the future, that moment will eventually be now. The passage of time is inexorable, no matter how far off a point in time you imagine, time will keep moving forward without fail and reach the moment you imagined. As a child, I used to imagine what it would be like to be an adult. Back then, it felt like 10 years or 20 years in the future was so far away. But that 10 years, 20 years passed, I am now an adult and have reached the point in time that I used to imagine was so far off. So, too, will the year 10,100 eventually come. So, too, will the year 1 billion 10 million eventually come. No matter how big a number I come up with, time will keep ticking and eventually reach that number. At that point, the universe will have been an empty and cold void for most of its history. Cold emptiness will be the universe's natural state. The time when the universe had planets, stars, black holes, galaxies, and life, was only a momentary glitch, barely even registering in the overwhelming majority of void and emptiness. Like the snap of a finger compared to an eternity. Imagine being transported to a parallel universe that was almost identical to our own. Somewhere out in the vastness of that universe, there is a tiny planet. This much is true in both universes. On this planet, there is a beach, and on that beach, there is a small stone. Once again, both universes are alike in this regard. Beneath that stone, however, there are several million grains of sand, and while they are all are in precisely the same location in each universe, one of them, a tiny speck of particularly clear quartz, hewn from a larger hole millions of years before, has a single atom that is positioned a fraction of a femtometer differently than its twin in the mirror dimension. You may think that such an insignificant difference would label these two universes as being functionally identical, and you would be right. In fact, they are so similar that the multiverse has long since combined them into one reality. That single atom in that tiny speck of sand on that lonesome beach on a distant planet merely occupies two spaces at once, seeming to an outside observer to vibrate back and forth at a predictable rate. That every atom in existence seems to do the same is probably a coincidence.